My name is Steve Davis. I am a senior ecologist here with the Everglades Foundation. I'm also our communications director. Well, the history of the Everglades is really, you know, death by a thousand cuts. And with the Everglades, it, it started with a recognition that it had these great soils and our climate down here in South Florida is mild and we get five feet of rainfall every year. If we could only access those soils to grow crops, we could do it year round. And so the push very early on was to drain the land and there were government incentives to drain the land. And uh, one of the first cuts was Lake Okeechobee, the, the dike around the lake that was built to protect some of those communities that experienced uh, initial flooding from hurricanes in the 1920s. The construction of Tamiami Trail, or Highway 41, across the Everglades from Miami to Tampa, and that east-west stretch that runs over to Naples was really the first dam across the Everglades. And, and since then, as the population continued to grow between Miami and West Palm Beach, uh, there was a need for more flood protection. So then the federal government became engaged in providing that flood control with what we call the Central and Southern Florida Project. That's our network of canals and pumps and gates in South Florida that provide us with our flood protection. That infrastructure combined was really designed to get rid of excess water uh, from the Everglades. And in fact, it was a decapitation of the Everglades as we know it from its headwater supply, Lake Okeechobee. And so diverting that water to the east and the west really sort of cemented that water management system that we still have today. And, and what we have learned is that it does a really good job at providing flood protection it's allowed an agricultural area south of Lake Okeechobee to persist for, for decades, um, but it's now coming at a cost because that water that's diverted away from the ecosystem is causing harm on the east and west coasts, the Caloosahatchee and the St. Lucie rivers. Uh, it's also causing harm all the way south to Florida Bay and the Florida Keys because that water that used to go there uh, is no longer there and so during dry periods we're experiencing problems of hypersalinity and seagrass die off at that end. So uh, what we've realized is that all of this infrastructure can be redesigned, it can be uh, reformulated in a way that it still provides flood protection but it does better for the environment and that's what Everglades restoration is.